We're going to bring him on today. That, of course, is Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. That is Ord-Oracle.com. You know, we have a lot of interesting stuff going on in the market. Like as I was saying with Elliot, I think there's a lot of uh, still uncertainty going on as long as far as rate cuts are concerned, where necessarily this market is going to go at the end of the day. And that's why we are bringing Tim Ord on. Tim, how are you doing? Good. Can you hear me? I can hear you fine, loud and clear. That's That sounded okay. very good. Uh, space age, yeah. Tim. Well, good. Everything's working. We couldn't get things working yesterday, but well, we figured it out. So fantastic. Uh, I guess you got my charts. I do. I, I I'm looking forward to going over this too because there's some interesting movement happening here. So yeah, it's pretty interesting. Actually, uh, chart one. Uh, this is. I'm going back to uh, Trump was a candidate in 2020. He was also a candidate in 2016, and I went back and looked uh, to see how those buy signals were generated or sell signals. Depends what was going on. And for some reason, I always said if there's no panic in the market, there's no bottom. And for both those lows in November of 2020, 2016, that's November 5th or the November election of 2016-2020, the 10-day trend never got to uh, 1.2 or higher range. So that kind of puzzles. It's kind of anomaly. I guess maybe that just happens every four years. Mm -hmm. uh, so I kind of looked at other indicators to find which ones uh, actually worked uh, or gave uh, bullish signals. Because uh, a lot of times you go into election, the market usually declines. Anyhow, the first chart is uh, the election of 2020 going into that November low. And what did work was the RSI on the uh, SPX tilt ratio. Uh, you know, the bottom window is the 10 day average of the uh, trend. If you look over to the November time frame, I got it uh, shaded in pink there, the, you know, September to uh, part of November, which is the kind of the area we're in right now, the time we're in right now. And I wanted to see what happened going into that November election. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the bottom window, the 10 day trend, you know, and right at that November 1st area was coming around neutral, now around one. So it didn't really give good information that that was a low. But if you go uh, to the top window, which is the RSI uh, for the SPX tilt ratio, which is the next window down, uh, the second window up from the bottom is the SPX. So, but anyhow, you did have a, a, a down surge in the SPX tilt ratio and push the RSI right around that 30. So in my opinion, it did give it a buy in mid-September there and he gave another buy going into the, the election. And I think that buy signal came in on uh, October 30th. I, I listed on another graph, I think, but uh, anyhow, yeah. that gave a buy. So that's 2020 low. Let's go to that. Let's go to back to uh, 2016 yeah. low. Yeah, we have it up right now. All right. Okay. Uh, this is a 2016 low. And, and again, the bottom window is a 10 day trend is right around one, not giving really panic readings at that low, but going again, top window, uh, is the RSI, uh, for the SPX tilt ratio, which is the next window down. And it did, uh, uh give uh, a buy signal. So, uh, we got two buy signals on the RSI on the SPX pick to ratio so let's look at where we are right now and uh, yeah, top window is the RSI next window down is the SPX, SPX tilt ratio next window down is the SPX and right uh, this is yesterday's reading it came in around 67 I just looked at it and we're around 65 RSI right now um, still kind of heading down here but we need to get close to 30 and that's what I'm looking for. Uh, how low can this pullback go? It's hard to say. Um, I think we're probably going to find support. Uh, there's a gap, I think, was on no, or, uh, October 8th. I, I yeah. didn't put it in on, on this chart. Uh, but there's a gap there around 5,700, 55, uh, or 5,650, 5,700 on the SPX. There's a gap there. And I'm thinking probably at a minimum we should get to that gap and ideally that gap would be tested at the same time as the RSI gets around 30 uh, so that's what I'm kind of looking for uh, this year the election is November 5th which is uh, almost three weeks away a little less 
Um, this week in the market is uh, expiration week, which normally has a bullish bias, but uh, election years only come out, you know, every four years. So things are kind of an anomaly here. We're, this oh, yeah. is not like everyday trading, <clears throat> especially oh, yeah. uh, going into elections. So you got to be careful what you look at. Uh, I did get a, kind of a bullish signal here a couple of weeks ago. I didn't take them because uh, usually the rallies are, are more meek. This one is actually halfway decent. Yeah. But I'm kind of waiting for uh, the big setup, in my opinion, is around that November uh, election time frame. So a lot of times these signals are generated before the, the announcement of the election. So I think the election will probably occur end of this month at the very latest, early before the election occurs on November 5th. So the market, in my opinion, will probably start going up on November before November 5th uh, announcement because the market will know in advance who the president will be. Yes. So, um, so anyhow, the market anticipates and usually if it anticipates something, it's right. And also, <laughs> you know, you shouldn't buy on news, you know, the right. market knows before the news even comes out. So uh, the market may already have started its rally. So we'll see how that works out. But right now, uh, I, I think the best is still sideways uh, this week uh, and probably start a decline if not later, not this week, but uh, next week going into the election. And uh, I think the election, the market will bottom before the election occurs. So um, we got we don't have a lot of time, I know. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, we're, we're, we'll go back to the next break. But you're right. You know, I, I, I think even looking through the past, like how the, the general market behaves right up into the election. I mean, this rally in particular is, is pretty strong, you know, again, especially in the SPX. But yeah, Tim, stay yeah. right there. Uh, we'll be right back. We're going to go over the rest of the charts uh, with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle when we get back. Welcome back, everyone. This is Jacob Shoot filling in for Tom O'Brien. We are joined right now by Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. Before we continue on, I want to take, uh, I want to help you guys take a look right here at the Services tab on TFNN. If you like what Tim is saying, and let's be honest, this is a fantastic technical analysis he has going on here. I know we all really enjoy when he comes on every Tuesday and Thursday. We have two fantastic. Uh, webinars that Tim did right here at TFNN.com. If you want to learn a little bit more about how Tim reads these charts and uh, kind of what it's all about, we have the secret science of market tops right here with Tim Ord and then the six secret ratios every trader should know. And these are for uh, really kind of a steel price. We're selling for 149 each. Go ahead and check those out if you want to learn some more. Tim, before we went to the break, we were looking at chart three. Take a look at the daily SPX with the RSI and the SPX uh, tilt right there. Um, but let's uh, let's move on here. I know we got chart four. Unless you got anything else you want to say on those charts. Good uh, chart four. Uh, we yeah. got it up. Uh, uh, the top window is the SP SPX fix ratio. The next window down is the VIX. Bottom window is the SPY. And I got a, a shaded pink area. It's kind of where we are right. Well, we're in that vicinity right now, and mm -hmm. it goes into that November um, election time frame. But if you notice, the S and P's were making higher highs going into, you know, Monday. I guess you might say. And if you notice, the top window is the SP SPY VIX ratio made lower highs. That's the bearish divergence, and that di divergence usually happen at highs. And there's another thing here also on the SPY chart. Uh, if the market goes up too fast or down too fast, the Bollinger Bands are actually a really good tool. Uh, to, to find out where the consolidations may end up at. And this is a daily chart uh, on, the, on the bottom window. And the, uh, if the market goes up too fast, it busts up above the upper Bollinger Band. Yep. And that's two deviations away from the 20-day uh, moving average, which is basically that dotted line. So if the market's gone up too fast, it's not really bearish. It can be. But normally means at a minimum, you're probably going to at least consolidate. And uh, I circled in, in blue there, the blue circles, the times when it broke above and closed above the upper or lower Bollinger Band. And every time it did, uh, it usually the market stopped going up or stopped going down. And last or this Monday, we, we closed above that upper Bollinger Band. And if you notice, we started a consolidation. Uh, so that kind of uh, reinforces the 
SPX VIX ratio, which is the top window, making lower highs, while SPX is making higher highs. That bearish, that's a bigger bearish divergence. It suggests that at a minimum we should move sideways here, and, and probably we're going to start pulling back. And uh, this chart on the um, SPY, I do have that gap listed there. That uh, it's kind of a light red, I guess, yeah, I right around that 565, 570 area. I think that was uh, uh, October 8th, that gap form. So I'm thinking we pull back there at a minimum, which is close to, if you draw a trend line across the previous highs of July and August, that comes in pretty close to that range there, too. So probably between 565, 70, in my opinion, is where the next low will form. And the next low, what I'm going to be looking for is what the RSI uh, does on the uh, uh, SPX tilt ratio. So if it gets around 70, uh, that would be a bullish sign for me for a, for the bullish setup. Because I think in general, this rally is not over. Um, I'm really surprised we're actually, uh, we've kind of rallied over the last week or so. That usually doesn't happen, but right. market does what it wants to do. But uh, anyhow, this rally's not done. We are, uh, I think the most powerful rally will come after the uh, we're probably a little bit be start a little bit before the election, and it'll probably rally pretty good go going all the way into year end. Um, how high is high? I, I think there's a good chance we'd probably have another 10% onto this rally. So we'll have to wait and see if that works out. But internals on the market, uh, like the summation decks, I look at that. Uh, last week it got over plus 1,000. That doesn't that type of reading on the summation index, that's McCollin's summation index, doesn't come tops in the market you can have consolidations but usually they're the warning that a bigger rally is coming in front of you so there's I a see. lot of energy in the market that is coming uh that's already there uh it's going to probably show up here probably uh first part of november so anyhow that's my analysis on the uh s and p's let's take a look at the gold market fantastic yep i'm uh, pulling up right now so yeah so okay uh, <clears throat> First one is the uh, top windows of bullish percent index for the gold miners index, and what the percentage of uh, bullish percent index is is measures the percent of stocks that are are on point and figure bicycles in that index, which is in this case uh, the gold miners index. And right now, uh, I got shaded areas uh, when that index is above 60 percent. In other words, 60 percent of of the gold miners index around point fear bicycles we're up around uh, when i made this chart we're up around 82 percent right now it's been in that range uh since april uh end of april or uh, actually uh, end of march first of april and that's where the, if that stays there which it has that's where you know the big rallies start from like the rally in 2016 it pretty much stayed above 60 percent buy signals also that rally that in 2019, a little bit late getting the signal, but once it got there, it stayed pretty much all the way into uh, uh, above 60%. Uh, so uh, right now, internals on, on GDX is just, there's, there's really nothing, uh, not too exuberant. If it gets too exuberant, that's usually a bad sign. Right. Uh, but it's, it's staying right there, right, right around the 80%. So there's a lot of gold stocks are starting to go up, and I think that number probably uh, increase. Let's flip to another chart, see where we are right now. Yeah, fantastic. We have it up. All right. This is the last chart. This is this is yesterday. I, today is pretty much the same thing. It didn't really do anything from yesterday to today. But the bottom window... Uh, is the 50-day average of the up-down volume percent for GDX. And in general, when this indicator stays above zero, the market is in an uptrend. You can have uh, short-term corrections, but not really worthwhile tops. I mean, the market can pull back. But this is kind of a measures the strength of the market. And, it, and this one gave a bicycle, looks like about end of March, 1st of April. And it pretty much stayed above, actually has stayed above uh, zero. Uh, in other words, when this indicator is above zero, this uh, suggests the market GDX is in an uptrend. So it's specific for GDX, um, which is basically an ETF for gold stocks. Right. And so it's been up, uh, so what, it's five, six months, six months, it's been above zero. And it's staying above zero, plus 15 right now. Uh, yesterday, 
or yesterday was 15. I think we're 14 plus today. So it's not backing away. It's, it's just staying in that plus 15 range. So uh, the market is just kind of regenerating its energy. And if you look at the top window, which is GDX, we're up against the previous highs of 2020 and uh, 2021, right, you know, around the 40 area. And uh, we're not backing away from it. And this indicator is holding above uh, 15, suggesting that we're probably going to bust through it. Uh, so how high is high? It's hard to say, but there's no sign, even on a short-term basis here, that we're approaching a top for GDX. Fantastic. Guys, if you want more from Tim Ord, you can go ahead and go over to ord-oracle.com and get some of his webinars from the services tab on TFNN. Tim, thank you so much for coming on today. and We'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Fantastic. Sounds great. Good deal. Great. We'll see you then, Tim. Talk to you then. Bye. Folks, stay right there. We'll be right back.